polarizing. He's a bit nuts. He curses like a sailor. His online courses have no refund policy or guarantee. He's a master of getting attention with online video. He's brash, successful, and smart. He's also Mr. Billy Jean coming up right now on the Rise to the Top. All right, and welcome, my friends, to the Rise to the Top podcast. It's your great and good friend, David Seitman Garland. Now, I don't know if you can hear it or not. I've got a cold going today, so I don't know if my voice sounds weird or if it's just in my head. But anyway, I just want to share that because the show always goes on here at the Rise to the Top podcast, my friend. You know, no matter what, rain, snow, cold, kids with colds, I got all kinds of stuff going on over here. But I got to tell you, the show goes on, my friends. That's why we are here. Welcome to a brand new episode. So, Today's going to be a great guest, and this is going to be a very different episode. If you're not into explicit conversation, we're talking about F-bombs being dropped. This might not be for you. If you are easily offended, this might not be for you. This is a very different type of guest coming on here today, Billy Jean from BillyJeanIsMarketing.com. Now, if you haven't heard of Billy Jean, that means you've been under a rock in the online world in the last few years. He has exploded onto the scenes. I see his videos everywhere. I see him everywhere. I It's crazy. And, it, and it's funny because I actually talked about this at the beginning of the interview today. I was trying to remember back how I first found Billie Jean. It was either like on a YouTube ad or a Facebook video. And it was funny because I just found him really relatable. I, I found him like he was coming through the screen and I really enjoyed it. And I kind of followed his company since then. And I figured, man, you know, wouldn't it be cool to get him on the podcast and share about a few things. One, what's his business look like now? What's working for him? What's working in the online space, the online course world, things like that? Because he does some stuff that a lot of people, other other people don't do. And also talking about kind of his views on entrepreneurship and how his business started and all that kind of stuff as well. So we got kind of two wide ranging topics in this conversation. First, we're going to talk about kind of the nitty gritty. We're going to talk about online marketing and and what his product offerings are and how they price them and and some of the things that they've changed over the years. You're going to find that really fascinating. And then we're going to get into why he's an entrepreneur, how he's grown his business, all that kind of stuff as well. So it's coming up right now here on the edition, DSG's Got a Cold edition of the Rise Top Podcast. Let's do it. All right. So I'm joined now by the man, the myth, the legend, Billy Jean. Welcome to the Rise to the Top, my friend. What's up, everybody? Thank you for having me, David. I appreciate you, bro. Oh, I appreciate you. You know, it's funny. I was actually thinking about this the other day, and I'm sure you would want to know this too, is that I I was trying to think, how did I stumble upon you several years ago? <laughs> and you know what I mean? I always feel like this is, a, you know, it's the internet. It's the internet. Like weird stuff happens, right? And I got to say, I, I it had to have been through a YouTube ad. It had to have been. I, I, I was trying to think back on that. And immediately, I just, uh, like for me, personally, you know, I see a lot of brands, I see a lot of businesses online. And there was something that stuck out about you. And I still don't know exactly what it is today. But that's how I first found out about you it was years ago. So I've, I've always kept kind of my pulse on you. But now it's kind of cool to, to have a conversation about it for sure. I appreciate that. You know, if it was a few years ago, it was probably a Facebook ad. With like two and a half years ago, we really went all in on YouTube. But it might we might have found you on Facebook first, and then retargeted you later on uh, YouTube. You gotta love it when the re- when the retargeting sta- starts. It never ends, my friend. So, you know, something that you talk about in your branding and your messaging a lot when you're teaching clients. The thing that I see is that you always say, "Get really good at something." And I'm curious, what's your really good? What 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 thing are you? Do you feel like you're really good at? If I had this, I, I think I'm decent at a lot of things. But I would think I'm I'm excellent at is I understand how to create entertaining videos that sell shit. For the, am I allowed to curse on this? Can I curse oh, on you your show? Curse you can. We'll, we'll hit the little e. We'll have to hit the little explicit like thing when we upload it. It's where we're good to go. Yeah, curse away. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I I would honestly say like I just understand the psychology that goes into one making people smile and making people laugh which is a big part of it one that's what's going to catch someone's attention i understand how to polarize people but then i understand how to take that energy and then actually craft an offer that's smooth and i think it's like this blend of like direct response and then also like my previous experience like writing for the radio and and doing other things and even just making videos as school projects like the blend the blend is where I think my excellent lie. 
Okay, I like that. That's that's a really cool, interesting way of looking at it too. Is the is, is the blend of those different things? And yeah, that's what I always notice. I mean, your your camera skills and in terms of your video skills, it's just you feel like you're in the room with you. You feel like you're getting a real person. You're not getting an actor. It's something that you know I find really cool. My question for you as we start, as we talk about this, is we know we're talking to a lot of course creators, a lot of people that are in the online digital product space. Something that I've noticed that you guys have done. So first of all, it seems like a lot of effort right now is going into the School of Genius program. Is that really where most everything is going? Because I feel like there used to be a lot of products up on your site, but now it's just one. Yeah. Bro, I'm glad you mentioned that. And that's pretty observant. But like, what I have found in regards to like, if, if you guys are course creators out there and you want to make this a business and not just a one-off thing that you're doing to generate cash, you need to simplify the hell out of your product suite. And what I mean by that is, is there was a time years ago where we had so many different courses, so many different ways to work with this. Some of it was group coaching. Some of it was one-on-one. Some of it was like come inside the office for a day, all this different shit. What ends up happening is you end up with a very confused marketplace on what you do. And I was the biggest one guilty of it. And then if you take my name of my company, Billy Genius Marketing, they get that I'm marketing, but like, what exactly does that mean? And so the smartest thing we've ever done in regards to our business is simplify the hell of what we offer. Now we offer two things. One is called the gene pool. It's like 109 bucks a month and I teach live every Tuesday and I bring in a guest once a month and we teach you stuff you cannot learn in school to help you get customers, period. And then after that, there is a 5K every six months program called the School of Genius and that's where we either A, teach you how to grow and scale your agency or B, half the people in there are brick and mortar owners of businesses and we help them get customers in a consistent way. Okay, interesting. And and now correct me if I'm wrong though, you used to have more of a bigger product suite. So what happened? Did you just say one day, like let let's sit down and say, you know what? What where's our top earning? Where do we want to put all this effort? Because I 100 percent agree with you. And I see this with so many people's businesses. They they just they go so thin on what they're doing versus kind of focusing on this one thing that they do really well. Let's just say our two things, right? And and so what what was that transformation kind of look for you guys? Like what were you guys doing and then how did you get it down to these two things? Is- it's it's discipline. It's discipline in giving up the short term to build a very solid business out of out of the long term. It was the same thing happened. I had an agency for six years. Even had not ha- having an agency plus courses plus coaching, all those other things that I named, even that was very derailing. So I sent out an email one day and fired 150 clients. I gave them my 30 day notice. That's how much I believe in this discipline. So you have to take a step backwards. And then also too, before you say which one's the most profitable and all that stuff, you need to design your life first. You set your life goals, then you set your business goals, as one of my mentors, Jim Bunch, would say. In other words, I liked the gene pool because it was once a week. I got to teach new stuff and exercise my brain that way. It was affordable so I can affect the masses, which I really like. Right now, there's a lot of shit in the industry where everyone's only focused on charging a lot of money. Everyone just says, charge higher prices, charge more money. That's like the, that's the, that's the shit. Everyone just keeps saying that. It's the Facebook that. ads. I mean, they, you go on Facebook right now, you'll see 37 ads about how to charge people $10,000 or high ticket this, high ticket that. Exactly. And then you just need one client or two clients. Dude, first of all, to charge high ticket, you have to have high skills. Yeah, you better be good. You better be good as shit. (laughs) You better be great, dude. And then secondly, whatever, like most people are struggling to make enough to support themselves. When did you become so cool that you forgot about actually making a product that can affect the masses that everyone could afford? No, I, I great point. Like, when did it become so selfish and selfish where we're just totally like only pricing with ourselves in mind and not the other end? What makes me most proud about the gene pool is everyone can afford it. Doesn't matter your color, your background, where you're from, et cetera. Everyone can afford the damn thing. And that's what makes it exciting. Yeah, I love it. And how much is it? You said it's a hundred and what'd you say it was? It's 109 bucks. Most members are paying 109 bucks a month, some 197, but most are paying $109 a month. And we're literally teaching you shit that's way better than any degree in on the planet. I promise you any business degree in regards, any business degree that's trying to claim they can help you grow a business between, you know, 500K, a million bucks, even to 5 million bucks, this is the best training on the planet. Now, see, here's what I love about this too, is that you mentioned before that you sent out the email to 150 clients, right? Or, or maybe you called them. Or maybe you called 150 clients. I don't know what you did. But email, just one mass email, it's over, right? 
was this because you saw shit? Because this happened in my business just in a different way. I wasn't working with clients necessarily, but I was doing other things back in the day. I was doing, I had a sponsorship model. I, I was writing books. I had all these different things going on when I decided to focus what I call courses, or you could call them digital products and programs, whatever you want to do. And that changed my entire world when I put the focus on that versus one on one coaching and all that kind of stuff as well. Is that what you saw when you did that? Were you like, you know what? For me to scale this business up and for my team and I to be the most helpful for people and where we're going to go, we're going to focus on this kind of training model? Is that what you saw? It was more, I, when I made the pivot and go all in, it was more of a resources thing for me is where it came from. I just very much realized that like only for every employee that you have, they only have so much output that they can give. And what I noticed is just when I had a whole bunch of people spending a little bit of time, everything's we got a little bit of results. So when I just said, hey, we're just going to have the sole job of educating people. And we still have our agency today, but we changed it to like an equity model and we have a handful of partners. Everything just went well. So for me, it was just the resources and really understanding. A lot of you have people on your team and you have the expectations for them to do like seven different jobs. So really getting everyone to focus on having one true job that they can master has changed everything. I uh, love it. So all right. So Gene Pool, back to that for a second here, because people love... I know when they're listening to the show, they love to find out kind of the behind the scenes of what people are doing with their programs and how they're structuring it and things like that. So you were saying it's, let's talk about that for a second. So you're doing a weekly live or was it weekly? Is that what you said? Yeah. Weekly, weekly, weekly live. There's a private Facebook group for the members, right? And then on that call, I broadcast from my studio here in San Diego. So I'm actually live. I have like probably five different cameras on me. I can share my screen, et cetera. So our production is probably the best in the industry, second to none. And in addition to that, what we did as a moat strategy is we actually, like when the market zigs, I try my best to zag. So everyone's online, 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 online. Online. Well, the thing about online is people still crave physical to be in person. So what we decided to do is I invested 700K to remodeling my whole office downtown San Diego, and I built out an entire studio. So there's 12 seats. Imagine 25, 25 seats. Imagine a luxury movie theater. It feels like that. And it's the coolest place on the planet to learn. Like literally I was in your picture so you can post it with this interview, but it's the coolest place ever to learn. And it's just another way for us to separate ourselves from the fucking noise in this industry. There's a market. I don't even like to call them info parks, anything. We every, if you look at our copy, we align ourselves with college as much as we can. Cause I don't want to be aligned with anything internet. Like, I don't want to have that positioning. There's just a lot of connotations that I don't want with it. And I want to be aligned with Harvard. When people talk about it, our goal, you'll see in 2019, like, I want people to be like, where do I go to learn about entrepreneurship? Should I go to Harvard Business School or do I go to the gene pool? That's where our vision's at. I love it. So so they get a weekly training and they get the Facebook group. And then there's, is there other pre-recorded stuff in there too? Or is it just basically, there's other, there's other trainings too, right? Well, I, so think about that. I've been doing that for two two and a half years, the gene pool or something like that, almost three years, maybe. So every single training I've ever done before they can access and we use Kajabi to host all of our stuff. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. And I like what you said about that. I mean, just kind of getting out of that. You, you, you seem to have done that really well, getting out of the, I hate to call it this world because this world sucks and no one wants to be in this world, the internet marketing world. It's a crappy world. It's a crappy world. And what I mean by that is really the old school kind of we know what we're talking about, right? But what's interesting is that when you exploded onto the scene, though, you came into an extremely crowded marketplace. I mean, digital marketing? Are you kidding me right now? Like, like, and it's really funny because because people are saying that, like, well, I want to be a fitness trainer, but there's twenty thousand other fitness trainers out there. There's uh, there's things, but you you were able to differentiate, and that's that's interesting. What were some of the things you did? I mean, the office is obviously a big one. How else did you see yourself as making a splash? Yeah. And those, those things came later. So I've been, I've been kind of doing the online advertising thing for like seven, eight years. Right. So before people saw me, I was still behind the scenes, like learning and mastering this stuff. But then also too, with my agency, one thing that really gave us leverage is I've had an agency. I've worked with some of the biggest franchises in the world. So like, I, it wasn't like everything I was teaching. I was just teaching because I manifested it. <laughs> you see that shit. Like I just manifest my skills. I'm like, no bro. Like I do this. And I'm like, you can, you like, I'm telling you, anyone listening to this right now, if you give me a business, especially a business doing under $5 million in revenue, any kind of brick and mortar component, I promise you, I will be able to get them customers if I'm personally doing it better than anybody on the planet. And anybody can test me on that shit. I'll beat you. I promise you. <laughs> I love it. 
I love, I love the confidence on it too. And it's funny that, yeah, because you have the background on it too. I mean, you know, I hear about that too in the course world is that when I first started creating courses on courses way back in the day, right, that there wasn't that many people doing it. And, and, and the reason was realized that I grew my business to seven figures before I started teaching it. And that's very important, right? And I think that's something that we see that plagues a bit of the industry is people coming on. You mentioned kind of those high ticket offers that we see all the time. Now, I really think it makes me throw up a little bit because I worry that these people are coming in here with no experience of doing it themselves. And now they're saying like, hey, I'm going to teach other people how to do it because at some point... That's not going to build a sustainable business. You may be able to trick, may be able to trick people for five minutes, maybe, maybe, right? It's not going to happen. Well, dude, it's it's wrong. It's just it's just wrong. Like I always give the example of, like, imagine, like, actually, I'll give you a real example. Take open heart surgery. If someone did open heart surgery on like your children, God forbid, and let's just say that person didn't actually have their credentials and didn't go have a residency, you know, didn't go to med school, you know, I'll, I'll do all of the things. And then your child didn't make it during that open heart surgery. You would sue the fuck out of the hospital for the rest of your life for practicing, you know, or performing that type of surgery when that person really wasn't ready to do. But you got to realize in entrepreneurship, when you're educating someone on their business, the way that people use their business is to provide for their family. That's how they pay their bills. That's how they decide which neighborhood to live in, which what school they should send their kid to. So when you're fucking with their money out of your greed, it's disgusting and fuck you. Like, that's how I feel. That's how I really feel. Like people aren't like, People aren't facing the reality. It's like the drug dealer who says, you know, like, whatever, they decided to do the drugs. Like, I didn't decide to, you know what I mean? I didn't make them do the drugs. I just gave it to them because the demand was already there. It's like, where's the, where's the moral compass? I love that rant that you were talking about that. By the way, something that I saw interesting that you did with your, with your products and programs that I don't see a lot of other people doing is that you offer – I love this – and this, was, this made me laugh so hard. I told my team when I saw this, I said, oh my God, I, I cannot wait to ask Billy Jean about this. It's about refunds and guarantees, right? Refunds and guarantees. And why, why don't you tell us what your guarantee and refund policy is? Because this is great. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a go fuck yourself policy. <laughs> it's not literally go fuck yourself, but I just, we've made a statement, a stand as a company. And we are very hard on we just do not give refunds, but we, we broadcast that to the masses and let people know. And the reason why we do that is because the quality, the quality of the customer has dramatically increased since doing that. And I care way more about the quality of the customer than the quantity of the customers. And that's the game. That's the game to building a sustainable business. Again, it's not a one-off thing for me. I care that when I'm on a group call teaching, I care who's in the group. I care if there's a troll. I care if there's that annoying person because my happiness comes before my income. So I protect our environment huge. And if I'm getting a whole bunch of people who are dabbling, you know why people want refunds? Because they want to be able to put one foot in the pool and decide if it's too cold or hot to go in. But the people who end up swimming are the people who fucking cannonball. I want those. That's the type of tribe in that, that I'm looking to create. That's the type of culture that I'm looking to build. So do you think just by making that change, or, or I don't even know if you had it, something different before, but when you went with the no, and you're so brazen about it, which I love, it's just out there. It's like, nope, guess what? There's no guarantees. There's no nothing. I love it because it made me laugh, but that you're saying that that has attracted the right people. Oh, 100%. Just imagine being um, around a bunch of people. Like The energy is different. You ever been around people who are just trying something they're just looking for excuses or reasons to quit it's a it's a loser mentality winners don't dabble you can't win when you're dabbling you can't do it it's not a thing so yeah man hell yeah smartest thing i ever done and i did have a refund policy before and i noticed that all the people who are asking all the wackest questions and and being rude and treating my staff poorly and every challenge it was the same motherfuckers who were asking for refunds and not applying shit like it's crazy. That's that's fascinating. So I would I would encourage folks. Hey, listen, listen. If you want to take do do a ballsy move here, if you're thinking about that, it'd be interesting to see. I mean, is that something you would encourage other people to try? There was a time where I did offer because I had a lot to earn being newer into the industry. But you also like be careful because like we've established a lot now, right? Like our ads have been seen over I don't know 300, 400 million times, something like that. I've had more people take. I've 
tens of thousands of people. I got more testimonials than probably anybody on the sun. So like, I'm at this point where I'm like, yo, I don't need to prove our shit. We have thousands of people saying our shit's fire that have had crazy results. I'm, I'm not, I'm not out here trying to prove myself in that regards, but I do think there's a time and place to do it on the agency side where I had a little bit more control of people's outcome. I would send emails and say, if you don't get results, I'll double. I'll double the money that you're paying me because that's what I had to do when I didn't have any trust and I was living at my parents' house and I was a college dropout. And, you know, that's the state I was in. I had to do that. And so, you know, we progressed and we evolved and we matured. Really interesting. I love it. Now, in terms of customer acquisition for you guys now, especially going into your, into your, into your programs, what is that looking like for you guys? I mean, obviously you're the, you're the king of doing the videos and things like that. Are you, when, when actually getting someone to go from an ad into, let's use the example of the gene pool. School of Genius is a little bit different, but school, the gene pool, what's working for you guys now? So imagine if you can use your entire team for one funnel. Imagine how good that funnel would be and how much focus you can put on and, and just all the good that come from it. So our our method of enrollment, matter of fact, dude, try to be completely real, trying to figure out the membership site thing, thing, like a lot of people are still trying to figure that out, was probably one of the most difficult marketing challenges that I've faced. And we fell on our face for like a year and a half. And I want everybody to realize what I just said. We fell on our face for a year and a half. When you guys are quitting on the thing that you want to do, how much time are you even putting in? And here's the other thing I want you to think about. My year and a half is with having like a team of 10 people while taking multiple shots a week and spending a whole bunch of money and losing a bunch of money trying to get it to work. So if you're like, oh, I spent three months trying to build up my one funnel and it didn't work and you gave up, you've taken one shot when we literally probably took about 455. That is a a great side note right there. That is a great side note. Yeah. The way that we get customers now is it's an ad to a video sales letter. There's an opt-in. Add to opt-in to a video sales letter. That's the entire formula. That's the entire thing. And the video sales letter is very good. It was like 36 minutes in length. There's a delayed call to action button that shows up about like 30 minutes in or something like that. And the offer is simple. Like people get afraid of recurring payments. And so naturally they're defensive. So that's not the thing. The bonus that we give them, we actually give them one of my courses, Clicks into Customers. And then the the, we, we have like a stack of bonuses that we give and that's why people get excited. But the only way you can get the bonuses is by becoming a member. That's been the most successful thing ever for us. And then to help monetize it, to offset the ad cost, to acquiring a customer, having a one click upsell for an annual membership or a lifetime membership on the back end. Lifetime membership is the best way to convert. We've seen the highest conversions there, 20 to 25% one click upsell. But, you know, annual probably drop down to about 15%. But then you have the recurring, but then, you know, most people probably stay like five months. Like it's just a whole fucking science to it. But nonetheless, that's the model. But then the people who do take the annual or the lifetime, my sales team, Team will call them and upsell them into the 5k every six months program. Okay. Interesting. So, so, so I'm on your site, right? Right. I mean, there it is. There it is folks. And by the way, I just like that. You note that it looks so simple now. I mean, it looks in, in a good way. I mean, it looks so simple when I see this and then it, you just, I like that you shared that this took like probably hundreds of misses and trying different things and who knows until you found that this is the one that worked, yeah. right? Well, and then, dude, now we have over 5,000 members. We've probably had, you know, over 10,000, 15,000 actually do it. You know, like, it's big. I love it. And, and is that on, if I go on your site now, just currently, is that the free ad creation training? Is that, the, is that what leads you to that path? Probably. I don't know. I have to ask someone on my team, but probably I think so. Yeah, most likely. It's something like that. Yes. Click here if you want to show me how to create profitable ads on social media and then you go on and on and on. So, all right, very cool. Now, where where have you so in terms of the ads for that, I've seen you do a variety of different things. I mean, you're on YouTube, Instagram, you know, all over the place with stuff. I in fact have seen you sponsor podcasts before as well. Did some stuff with John Lee Dumas. Sponsor podcasts, billboards. Is there Yeah, any- like booths at events, not at all. Did you see, did, like, I, I hate to even put it, did one thing work better than the other? I hate to even ask that question. But if you were, what, how, did, how did something like podcasts work? Because we, we know that YouTube ads work. We know that Instagram ads. We know that Facebook ads work. How did something like podcast advertising work out for you guys? Well, it's all the same, right? In regards to paying for the cost of attention. And so to me, it's just how much is it going to cost for us to get a click? Or let me actually rephrase the real lead metric that we'll look for is what's our cost per lead. 
So it doesn't really matter what the medium is. If I spend a thousand dollars and a hundred people opt in, that's a ten dollar cost per lead. If I spend a thousand dollars on a podcasting and a you know. 100 people opt in, my cost really was five bucks. So once I started looking at, hey, I know that 2% of the people that, that watch this video, somewhere between 1.5 to 2% of the people will watch this uh, or will actually purchase, then I was able to make decisions based off of that. So the whole thing became about just get people to watch this fucking video and the math will be the math. I know I'm going to be watching this video later, by the way. It's just a fun fact. I'll be dissecting it. <laughs> we just did it. We actually, we just did a new one, dude. You should watch that one. That's on that. I probably ran it for like two years and it still drives sales today, but uh, we just made a new one. I got to touch up a little bit. Maybe you should watch a different version of it, but I can send that to you too. Nice. I love it. I, now I want to ask them just kind of, as we just have just a few more questions here today too, Billy Jean is asking just a little more on the, on the kind of broad entrepreneurial spectrum, because I know this is something that you love to talk about as well. And, and for you, you know, what, what drives you in your business? Like what gets you excited to be building your empire? I'm in my office right now and I can look at this giant mirror that takes up the whole entire side of a wall, a mural, and it's me in giant size. And I'm literally punching a hole through a building. That building is my school, University of San Diego. I think education for entrepreneurs is the biggest legal scam. This is real. The biggest legal scam that exists in the world. You have to think about this. You're paying, like I went to the University of San Diego, it's $200,000 for your undergrad degree by the time it's all said and done, 200,000 bucks. The first two years of that, they don't even allow you to take business courses. You have to focus on other courses that have nothing to do with what you want to master. Okay. In addition to that, you end up paying interest on these things for about 20 years after that. And then even in the core courses of business, they typically do not apply to actual business. There is no, in addition to that, now they're extremely outdated. There is no courses on how to sell shit on Facebook. But realistically, if you ask anybody who wants to start a business in 2019, they're all going to say, well, the first thing I'll do is go to social media, but school's not teaching on it. And even if they did with the way that they have this semester system broken down, they are not keeping up with the speed of technology. Video ads are here, then messenger ads are here, or bots are happening. That could all happen in one quarter. At that point in time, they're still using some old textbook or something. Some outdated shit. The structure is innately fucked up and broken. And the problem is you have politicians promising education for votes, but really, and people are behind it. Yeah, education. It's not about education. What you learn actually matters. I love the idea of school. I lo love the idea of college. I fucking can't stand the curriculum. It's dumb. It's enslaving people, it's trapping people. You know, you have people in poor parts of this country, the U.S., and they're taught to believe that their ticket out of their bad situation is college. But now it's just a ticket into more debt. Employers more and more by the day are not even looking to a college degree. It's about the problems you can actually solve. So everything about it is outdated. Everything about it is fucked up. Everything about it is overpriced and it's going to be destroyed and we will lead the charge. I love it. And so that it's really interesting that you have that obviously that very strong why with your business. And what was the first business that you started? Mobile oil change company. <laughs> and I had a mobile oil change company out of college. And I realized, wait a second, I just went to this fancy school for business and all this stuff. And hold on a second. I don't even know how to get customers for my business. Something's off with that. Why don't I know what to do? And that and then how did that lead eventually into doing an agency? Well, because that went out of business, I was checking in people at 24 Hour Fitness. That was my job. My car got towed and it had all my shit in it because I was staying at a buddy's house because my parents weren't talking to me because I didn't finish my last class at the University of San Diego and they found out. And so my car got towed. I didn't have anything. I needed a job. I ended up going online. I got hired like a week later at this company called Ashford University. It's an online school that is the most manipulative piece of shit school along with the rest of them out there. And what they do, their entire, this is actually important. So you guys should pay attention if you're listening. What they do is they call people who have their GED. Okay. And a lot of them are very uneducated and they say, Hey, you should turn your life around and go to college, which is the degrees that they sell. And then the people say, I can't, I don't have any money. And then they say, it's okay. The government will give it to you. I'm going to go hang up on the phone. Then you call me back. I want you to go to the fast food website and they're going to give you 9,500 bucks. 
and they're gonna give you 9,500 bucks for the year. And then what the school does is they take that money right away. The people that they're manipulating to come to the school because they're truly not prepared for it end up only going through about five, six, seven, eight classes max. The school collects all the money that person leaves with all the debt and the responsibility. Oh, not not cool. It's real. This is this University of Phoenix, all this shit. This is this is all these things. It's a it's a it's a real thing thing. And this is a funny thing. And this is for everybody on this podcast. People will call us the scammers. You guys, if you sell an online course, you've been for sure been called a scammer before. Every single person here, they call us the scammers. But think about what I just told you. They're charging prices. They're getting us to borrow money to pay interest on, to learn from courses that are completely outdated that don't actually help us. But we're the scammers. Go fuck yourself. Amen on that. I don't know. I, yeah, it's amazing how people in this world, like if you have an online course or have a personal brand or anything out there that you're selling anything, immediately get called a scammer. Doesn't matter what it is. It's unbelievable. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man, that's, a, that's the mission. That's the passion. I don't remember the original question, but yeah. yeah. Oh, the original, but I, I like the ran the school, but I was, I was asking from, from when you went from this mobile oil change company to then eventually getting into the digital oh, yeah. space. So I started working at that school and then I, I learned about the power of online education. So like, granted, I'm talking shit about this. Only a fool would go to somewhere like this, see 6,000 employees, the CEO make 25 million bucks and not learn anything. So I did see the power of how, you know, this online thing could work for stuff. And so I ended up licensing this program. And this program was a, a quit smoking program that was 100% online. And I put it in the online classroom format that Ashford used. And to sell that quit smoking course, I learned about something called Facebook ads. And I tried to sell that course for like three years, learned about Facebook. Long story short, went my separate ways with that company. But I knew Facebook ads this time. And then I just, I didn't start an agency. I didn't even know what an agency was. I just started charging people to do Facebook ads for them to help them get customers. And that's how it started. And then people were like, oh, you're an agency. I'm like, I don't even know what the fucking agency is, but whatever. I'll run these ads. You give me money. I'll bring you customers. And it morphed into that. I love it. Now, you know, with that, it, what makes me think about that is really interesting is that you've done a variety of different things, right? And people always have, what do you think about the advice that you need to follow your passion in business? Do you think that's important? I believe that when times get hard, what helps you get through them is that you love what you do. And I just... Like people, you hear it all the time. Like you have to love what you do. This is twofold. So I a thousand percent believe that. Like I obsess about what I do. I I've talked about marketing and videos and sell shit for eight years because I love it. I'm obsessed. With, I love looking at funnels. I love geeking out about stats. I genuinely am obsessed. Like I love storytelling. Like all those things. I love it. That's why I do it. That's why we're great at it. However, on this road to success. There's a lot of shit that I didn't like to do that I needed to do to become successful. And right now, there's so much advice from life coaches in saying shit like, well, it just doesn't feel good. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't sit right with me. Like it feels just out of, this is, this my, this is my favorite one. You have to F and do it. You have to F and do it. Bro, bro, my favorite one is it just feels out of alignment. Fuck your alignment. Are you kidding me? The building a business sucks ass at times, but once you have that foundation built, it's what it is. Anything worthwhile feels out of alignment for a while. When you have no skills, you're going to suck at everything and doing things you suck at doesn't feel good. So there is a time that you need to allocate to say, oh shit, I'm in for my ride. When doctors go to school, they say, oh shit, I have a decade of eating ass before this feels great. A decade, a decade of debt, a decade of no income, a decade of studying, a decade of taking the hardest test ever, a decade of residency, a decade of learning before I can get to where I want to go. Only in entrepreneurship do we think we can skip the fucking line. And it's funny as being an entrepreneur who's married to a doctor, that's me. <laughs> there you uh, go. Yeah, so there you I, go. <laughs> I, I, can, I can certainly relate to that, what you're saying. And that's exactly right. I mean, you need to have... There, there, you know, it's interesting. I, my, my thought on it too is, is, is passion obviously is super important. You gotta have it, right? I mean, but the funny thing is, if you would have asked me 10 years ago when I first started my business, 10 years ago, right? 2000, 2008, when I started my business, if you would have said that in 2013, what my business is gonna come about is gonna be teaching people how to create their own products and programs and, you know, create courses and things like that, et cetera. If you'd have told me that, I would have thought you would have been effing crazy. <laughs> yeah, man. I would be like, what the hell are you talking about? You know what I mean? That's not what I'm doing at all. But it's funny that 
what I've noticed, and, and see if you write this, like not only does the passion and things that you enjoy doing evolve, it evolves. It changes over time. I mean, like, 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 then I got into it. I'm like, oh my God, I love this crap. This is awesome. Like, I'm watching people, I'm watching people that are changing their lives because they're able to create these, these products and programs and teach them their experiences. And I'm like, I, I, it's unbelievable. And watch this. And we may talk next year and you may be, and you may be over it, and so might I. Right. Like that's that's the very human thing. You bring up a great point is like it evolves our our taste and preferences. They change. And that's OK. Yeah. And, and, that, and, that, and that's what I'm saying. But you have to have, like you said, that grit because there's going to be running a business is not pretty. It's like you said, it sucks a lot of the time. There's a lot of things that you're not going to want to do that you have to do. It's not going to be all the pretty stuff, right? It's not going to be just the testimonials that are coming in. There's other stuff that goes on. And it's funny that that definitely takes a certain type of person that's able to battle through not only the first challenge, the hundredth challenge, the thousandth challenge, the 10,000th challenge to keep going, right? And then you see too many people, I, see, I get very upset because I see too many people going out of business every year or, or not willing to take the risk and jump in. And I, I don't know, it's just, it's, but it's nice to be real with people. Just you know. what, And Dave, that's what business is, is. It's solving problems. Guys, I hate to break it to you, but if you're one that gets frazzled because a problem arises, you're not an entrepreneur. Like I hate, like when you solve one problem, the only thing I know for sure is another one is, is now due to solve. It's just that that's the game. That's what it is. The problems just look different, right? They feel different. You see them coming. You've been dealing with them longer. They become easier and you understand, you get wiser if you're, you know, educating yourself, but yeah, man. And and that's also why you don't want to follow the fad of the money train, you know? And that's and that's what we see too much, I think, especially in this online industry, right? Is people seeing like, well, you know, this is a fast way to make a buck. Or this is this is easy. Look, look, Dave, it's like this. The amount of money that people make is directly correlated to the amount of problems that you can solve. If you can't do anything unique, and you can't help somebody solve something, I know how much money you make. You don't gotta tell me. I can literally tell you exactly how much you make. Right. I, I had someone tell me the other day, they said, you know, I want to create a, a successful online course, but I hate teaching people stuff. I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, little problem, small problem that I can kind of think. I said, you know what? I said, I got to be honest with you. Like, this is not for you. I mean, like, I don't know what you want me to tell you. Like, maybe there'll be some other people that would be willing to take your money, but I'm not going to be one of them. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, I, this is not for you. I mean, so you got to realize that, you know, th- th- that's the world that we're in, my friend, <laughs> that, that it is right now. And you can see right from there where, 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 you know, where people are going with their business right then, you know? 100%, dude, 100%. All right, I love it. Well, Billy Jean, this has been great. I feel like this was a wide-ranging conversation that we had talking about even getting into the micro stuff of like what you're doing with your funnels and your your programs and then kind of even going more broad and just talking kind of entrepreneurship and things like that as well. I think you bring a super fun perspective to this and and keep up the good work, my man. You're, you're, you're doing great stuff. And I, I know there's going to be people that, you know, maybe there's 17, 18 people out there that haven't heard of you yet. Now they're going to go check you out from this. So that's cool, right? Hey, I, I appreciate one. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for the opportunity. It means a lot. And so hopefully if you guys are listening, you took something from this that could help you and change your life. So thank you very much for having me. All right. Thank you. And the website is billygeneismarketing.com. Thank you, Billy Jean. This was awesome. All right, brother. Later, guys. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that very, very uncensored conversation with Billy Jean. He's a character. I love the rants. I love just the kind of a thought process. And also, I, I love little things like this, like where people are zigging, he's zagging. You know, he sees an opportunity, goes the other way, does something else. I love the idea of condensing because a lot of times, if you've got too many products out there, it causes market confusion. People don't know what to buy. What about this, this, or that? Versus putting all your effort into one or two things. We have seen that make a huge difference in our business as well. So Billy Jean is marketing is his website if you want to check that out. As a reminder, you can subscribe to the Rise to the Top at the rise to top.com slash subscribe. Brand new episodes of the Rise to the Top podcast come out every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Central. Now on the way out, I would not be a good host if I didn't remind you of this. If you are thinking about creating an online course and you want to learn the framework, what you're going to need to do to be successful, I would highly recommend you sign up for my free training at createawesomeonlinecourses.com. Sign up, choose a time that works for you, listen to the presentation, you're going to learn a lot and be able to get on that path towards a successful online course. All right, my friends, I will see you next time on the Rise Top Podcast. I've been David St. McGarland, and remember, if you want some fluff, you know what to do, go pet a bunny. Go pet a bunny.